Hello, welcome to my video on growth scan, a fetal well-being scan. This is a part of our series, Be Aware, Be Prepared, Be Safe. This is an initiative started to enable patients to take well-informed decision regarding their pregnancy scan services. So let's talk about growth scan or the fetal well-being scan. When does a doctor usually recommend a fetal well-being scan? Usually, the doctor, once the anomaly scan, which is done at five months, doctor recommends a growth scan at around 28 to 32 weeks of pregnancy. We usually check the great growth rate of the baby during the scan and also the blood flow to the baby. Once the growth scan at 28 to 32 weeks is done, another growth scan is usually recommended closer to the date of delivery, that is at 36 to 40 weeks of pregnancy. So what and all do we check during a growth scan? The first thing we check during a growth scan is the baby's position. The position is extremely important because that decides the mode of delivery. So we need to check whether the baby's head is down or not. Second, the placental position. The placenta position is important because if there is a low-lying placenta, that might hinder the baby during delivery and it must also cause excessive bleeding. Third, the amniotic fluid volume. Amniotic fluid volume is the fluid volume which is surrounding the baby when the baby is inside the mother. Apart from this, the baby's weight is also checked. The baby's weight is checked by taking three measurements. One is the head circumference, the second, the abdominal circumference, and third, the thigh bone measurement. So all these three measurements are taken, plotted in a growth chart, which is compared with an anomaly scan growth, and the growth and weight of the baby is reported. And if we suspect any growth abnormality in the baby, a Doppler scan, that is blood flow to the baby, is also done in the same setting. Usually growth scan takes around 15 to 20 minutes time, depending on the position of the baby. Apart from all these, the baby's structural anatomy, so whatever the baby is showing at this stage, is also visualized. So as I told you, once the baby's weight is measured during a growth scan so we will be able to identify if the baby is growing well or not. So usually we require two scans to compare the growth of the baby so, so that we can plot it in a growth chart and check whether the baby is growing properly. So let's take for an example if the baby's head and the thigh bone is growing properly and the baby's abdomen is very small then what does it mean? That means that the placenta that is from the mother there isn't enough nutrition going to the baby. So that means this baby is growth restricted. So there are two types. One is a small growing healthy baby which is called small for gestation or a growth restricted baby. Let me differentiate between the two. Small for gestation babies. These are healthy babies who tend to grow in a lesser range from the beginning of pregnancy. Say from the third month fifth month and seven or nine months, the babies have been tending to grow in the same lesser range. They are healthy babies, these are called small for gestation. Whereas on the other hand, you check growth restricted babies, these babies who have been growing very well from the third month or fifth month, they suddenly drop in their growth pattern when they come to seven or eight months of pregnancy. So these babies who suddenly drop in the growth rate requires more monitoring when compared to a normal, smallly growing baby. So these babies, these are growth restricted babies, require serial monitoring depending on how growth restricted they are, depending on the severity, they might be called for subsequent scans. Usually we don't call the patient within two weeks of scan because there isn't much weight difference between within two weeks. So we usually call them within four weeks or six weeks. So we also perform a Doppler scan if required. Apart from the baby weight, if the baby's weight is growth restricted or the baby weight is less, we also see the amniotic fluid volume which tends to be less or normal and a Doppler study. So let's take the other scenario. When the abdomen of the baby or the head or abdomen and all the fetal parameters or the baby parameters are in the higher range. That is the baby is actually growing much more than it should grow. That's the first thing which will strike us if there is a fluid volume which is increased is a mother diabetic. 
So if the mother is a diabetic, then we need to check her sugars if it is under control or not. So these are the two scenarios which we usually come across in a growth scan. Additional scans are usually required when the mother complains of reduced fetal movements. That is, she's not able to feel the movements properly or if the baby's position is not proper. The head, do head down position is usually, usually what we see. Kephalic, that's what we call it. The head should be down in a baby closer to the time of delivery. If the head is up, that is in case of breach, oblique or transversely placed, we will require another growth scan to confirm its position. When the mother is carrying two or more babies, more frequent scans are done to document the growth of both the babies. And in case if you feel that the amniotic fluid or the measurement of the doctor says the amniotic fluid is less, there will be more scans required. And even if the placenta is low lying. So what is called a biophysical profile? This is usually performed when the mother says that her baby movements are very less or very less or reduced when compared to the previous time or previous day or yesterday or, or today that the movements are very less. So what we do in a biophysical profile? All what I said before, that's the baby's weight, amniotic fluid, everything is checked. Apart from that, we also check if the baby is moving properly or not. Is the arms, hands and legs are flexing and extending or not? If the fingers are opening or not? Those are called the gross body movements and fine body movements. And also, we also check for the breathing movements of the baby. Apart from that, the fluid and the heart rate and rhythm is also documented. So all this put together is called a biophysical profile. So what can't a third trimester or a growth scan reveal? A growth scan is usually not a scan to correct the date or ascertain the expected date of delivery. Because the date of delivery for a pregnant mother should be ascertained as early as in the first three months or maximum by fourth or fifth month. Because in the third trimester, the baby's weight and growth increases. So we cannot ascertain the, the expected date of delivery in the growth scan. The weight which we give, usually we give approximately plus or minus 200 grams because when the head is becoming bigger and it is going into the hip bone of the mother, the head circumference can vary. So there are a lot of variations between the uh, weight of the baby. So usually when we recommend, when we usually uh, report a weight, baby's weight in a scan report, it's usually plus or minus 200 grams. So as I already told you, the more, more scans are required for a baby which is small, which is growing small, or even if the baby is growing a little bigger. And this will also be included by Doppler scans. So what is usually the reason for a baby which is growing small? Probably there isn't enough nutrition coming from the mother through the placenta or the baby by itself is small because of chromosomal problems or any structural malformations. So these babies are monitored case by pa case, patient by patient. There is no structured monitoring protocol as a routine which is followed for a growth restricted baby. It is always patient by patient. Growth scan. To summarize, the growth scan takes place when the mother is between 23 and 40 weeks pregnant. It checks how well the baby is growing and its position in the uterus. The scan assesses the baby's well-being through its movements and growth. Certain parameters such as isolating the source of bleeding or checking whether pregnancy dates are right is difficult later on in the pregnancy. Some babies may experience restricted growth. This is called fetal growth restriction or intrauterine growth restriction. Signs that may indicate FGR are changes in the umbilical cord blood flow and reduced amniotic fluid volume. For your benefit, this information and much more is available on our website www.chennewomensclinic.com.